Welcome back, I'm Tedward, and welcome to the all new 2023 GMC Sierra 1500 AT4X AEV edition. This off-road monster is finished in deep bronze metallic, and the AEV edition gives it an incredible stance and look on these wheels, tires, and with these beautiful steel bumpers. The AT4X is basically the ZR2 of the GMC lineup, so this is the off-road focused road going monster. So it's comfy on the road, but it's also probably the most off-road capable vehicle they make. It'll still tow 8,700 pounds as a 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8 making 420 horsepower, 460 pound feet of torque, which in the realm of trucks these days is a little short because for example, you've got the Raptor or the TRX making big monster power, but those are not as off-road capable as this because this has front and rear e-locking differentials and it has insane ground clearance with approach and departure angles that'll blow your mind. It has 11.2 inches of ground clearance. The approach angle with this AEV package is 32 and a half degrees and the departure angle is 23 degrees. So what do you pay for all of this? Well, that's a little tough to stomach. It's $90,000, just shy of $91,000 in this trip, which is a little wild since if you go to the very base of the Sierra lineup, they start under 40 grand, but you are getting quite a lot for your money in this truck, but you've got to make some decisions here because this is a big, relatively large vehicle. And if you're going to spend 90 Gs on this thing, do you really want to go and off-road it and potentially break it? Well, it is seemingly indestructible. Underneath, you get a slew of hot stamped boron steel skid plates that are going to protect everything up front, your transmission, your differential, your fuel tank, all the goods are going to be protected with this and they are three and a half times stronger than cold stamped. And these monster front steel bumpers, boy oh boy, you're probably not going to do any damage to the truck with these if you get a little excited and maybe you mess up on the trail. Stabilizing this truck, we've got the Multimatic DSSV dampers like we've seen in the ZR2 and the Canyon AT4X in, in the past. These are fantastic. They're not Baja suspension, so if you're expecting this truck to be a Raptor, it is not. This is not going to be your crazy trail running thing. I'll Although you can drive fast on some dirt roads, but this Multimatic DSSV is going to make this a more off-road capable vehicle and still give you reasonable comfort on the road. The AEV edition is going to give you these beautiful gloss black 18 inch wheels wrapped in 33 inch Goodyear Wrangler Territory Mud Terrain tires. So you will be good to go to get down and dirty. You also get this awesome rocker guard because you know you don't want to go and mess up your chassis when you're out there getting down and dirty. So let's take a look around. You've got the big stamped bumpers out back as well. On the rear tailgate, you definitely know what this is. There's no mistaking it's a GMC because holy cow, that's a big emblem. And no one will mistake that you spent the money on your AT4X because you've got the AEV badge here. So let's open this up. There's our beautiful bed. It's a little short, so you know this is definitely more of an off-road thing than maybe your full-blown work truck, but it'll still do the job for most people. If you need something bigger, you can always get that. But down here, we have our fun tailgate that gives us a step, a handle there, and then you have access to this beautiful lined bed. But even cooler than that is that on this tailgate, just like we saw in the Hummer actually, you've got the kicker sound system. So this is the ultimate tailgater's dream. And don't worry, you can charge your phone right here. So if you thought, man, I wanna plug in, but I gotta plug into the car. Nope, you can keep it all out here. Now, I always think these are a little ugh, clunky to put back. This is not my favorite design. And for 90 grand, I know, you're like, hey, buck up, buddy. Just deal with it. Well, for $90,000, I almost want that to be easier, but that's okay. What you don't get on this bumper, the AEV bumper, is you don't get the side step. And the side step I thought was pretty valuable, but the fact that you've got the tailgate, you are gonna be just fine. And this is still reachable, not too bad. You have a capless fuel filler, and let's start digging around inside. 
This is where the GMC really separates itself from the Chevrolet because holy cow, this is premium. This is a nice setup. Inside, we've got a 12 speaker Bose system. So the sound system's fantastic. You've got all of this space, heated rear seats, USB-C and USB charge ports with HVAC controls for the rear passengers. The headliner is all Alcantara. So you immediately feel like you're in a very premium cabin. In addition to that, you've got the nice stitched leather with different colors actually, so it deviates. And armrest with cup holders, the cutest little headrest for your center passenger. And the doors, the doors are comfortable because, and I know that sounds crazy, the doors are comfortable. Well, look, this armrest, nice soft materials, and you've got some wood grain and just a nice mix of things that add some contrast because this is a lot of real estate. You got to make it interesting. Up front, we've got these beautiful captain's chairs with the AEV embroidered headrest, AT4X here. Very comfortable, wildly adjustable seats. And this button right here, that's your massage seats. Yes, it has massaging seats, which this has so many options and so many features that I did not realize that until I had already put about 200 miles on the truck. So that's a bummer for me. I could have been getting a massage the whole time tons and tons of storage space just like we saw in Silverado ZR2 you know that's all the same stuff it's just that this amps it up a notch with the refinement and comfort level and noise insulation under the hood going up nice and easy on those struts there is our 6.2 liter v8 buried deep in there it is connected to a 10 speed automatic transmission it absolutely gets the job done and i know that in a world of ridiculously fast trucks 420 horsepower doesn't sound like a whole lot but it is plenty in this at 4 x and i think it makes a lot of sense plus it's nice not to have turbos i feel more confident in this engine knowing that it's naturally aspirated so let's close it up and take it for a ride Oh, I love these. I kind of wish this was a real nostril. Like, check that out. That would look so cool if that was actually like an, a Ram Air intake. But whatever, you've got tons, tons of cooling real estate up here in the bronze front grille. Oh, and I love the little paint matched shark fin for the antenna. Very cool. This rocker guard is wonderful, but like they're not great as uh, uh, steps. You always feel like you're kind of off a little bit. You kind of end up sidestepping a little bit and using the handle. The handle is wrapped in leather, which is very nice. So let's get out there and take this for a ride. Let's get it started. We have the world's largest engine start stop button right here. Foot on the brake. jumps to life with a giant infotainment screen. Holy cow. All right, it's doing some automatic things for me already because it's turned on my climate control and my cooled seats. You also have heated seats and you can decide whether or not you want just the rear back of the seat to be heated or the entire seat with the bottom and the back. Now, I am gonna stick with my cooled seats because it is 73 degrees and humid. There's so many buttons and I love buttons. I love that you don't have to do everything through this touch screen because I can get to all my HVAC controls here with the heated and cooled seats. And down here, I can turn on and off my lane departure warnings, my auto start stop, I can lower the tailgate, I've got my hazards, and I can control my locking differentials, the electronic locking diffs. So I can put on the rear or both the front and rear. Over here, we've got modes. So I'm in normal mode. I can put that into off-road mode. I can put that into terrain mode. I have to select four high for terrain mode, but here you can do uh, four-wheel drive low, four-wheel drive high, leave it in auto. And that's great that this is just so easy. It's not cumbersome to have to try to, you know, yank some gear lever into four-wheel drive mode and hope for the best. No, you just hit a button and it's done. You've got all your lighting controls here. So you can set this up pretty darn clever. If you're in the dark, you can get that, uh, that bed illuminated or from these mirrors, you can illuminate those. In a very convenient spot, if you're towing, you can use your trailer brake right here. I like that. Actually, I like it better than being up here. A lot of the Fords put them up here. I definitely prefer having that over here because it's like exactly where you'd want it to be in an emergency. You don't want to have to go fishing for it. It's just right there. To put it in drive, hit the button and off we go.
reasonable turning radius. And before we hit the road, I do wanna show you these cameras because, oh boy, I do love the cameras that GM is using in their vehicles right now. They're very high quality and you get a ton of views. So you can use the top down 360, you can get the, the wheels, you can get the tailgate, all the things you could imagine you might need for visibility is all right there. Well, let's go make this V8 sing. If you're telling me that's not enough power, you're crazy. This is a pickup truck. You do not need this to do standing launches and beat supercars. That is plenty darn fast, and this 10-speed reacts pretty darn quick. The one thing I don't necessarily understand are these paddles. I have a plus minus on the paddles, and I'm hitting them, but there is no response. I, I, do, I don't know if maybe I just need to be in, like, low mode or some other thing. I guess, all right, there we go. Now it's working. So you can't just use those from drive. You've got to hit the right button. Okay, there we go. Problem solved. Figured it out with some ingenuity. What I love about this truck is just how refined and quiet it is inside, even on the 33s. I mean, sure, you hear a little bit of road noise from it, but it's not terrible. It's easy to live with. But what's interesting about these big trucks, and especially when you get into kind of like luxury stuff like the GMC, is they sort of just become, they sort of just become seven series s classes it's strange because here i am in this big truck that has crazy off-road capabilities that whenever i pass something like this it makes me want to go through that fence and root around in the dirt but the reality is i'm probably spending most of my time on the road on the highway commuting dropping the kids off. I have this truck because it's comfortable, it's cushy. If I wanted just some bare bones, raucous thing, you could spend a heck of a lot less, do some aftermarket mods, but no, you bought the GMC. That means that you're looking for some refinement, some executive comforts. And it's interesting because I do find myself driving this like an S-Class, like a 7 Series. I'm relaxed. It takes the stress out of driving because I, I can get a little road ragey, but I get more road ragey when I'm in a sports car. I get more road ragey when I'm in my Honda Civic Type R or, or something a little racy because when something this big maybe comes into your lane, you get furious. Oh my God, you almost killed me. But when you're in this, nothing will almost kill you because you're the, the king of the road, basically. I mean, sure, there's 2,500, 3,500 heavy duty trucks and all that good stuff, but you are way up there in this thing and nothing's gonna bother you. So I do find myself feeling properly insulated from the world and relaxed. I'm starting to notice GMC is everywhere. Nobody waves, there's no like GMC wave. And I'm kind of surprised by that because I feel like this is actually one of those tight little communities of cars. The steering. It's very much like the Silverado ZR2. I mean, it feels the same. It's it's pretty easy to drive. It's not as connected as, say, the midsize truck, the Canyon or the Colorado. I think those are, maybe are the choice for me. They're the right size. Those are still plenty big. Uh, but, you know, I'm not chasing the vehicle. It's pretty easy to drive. I think most people could jump in this with ease and, and be very comfortable and confident. That goes for the brakes as well. Brakes really nice, and I think that's important on a vehicle of this size is that you need to feel like you can bring it to a halt in a hurry and not feel like, oh man, there's nothing in the pedal for this far. You know, they, they react pretty darn immediate. character of this engine is 
insane because it does have good low-end torque, but boy, oh boy, does it grow with revs. It kind of gets a little racy, actually. You don't just have the low-end torque that you're riding, for example, in the 2.7-liter four-cylinder turbo that they put in the Colorado in the Canyon. No, you've got to get these revs up a bit to really get into it. And it's fun the way they did this tachometer because they let it rev all the way to the back. I will say there's a point in this for the Canyon because the Canyon actually has a more interesting uh, dashboard display. You can change to just the big map and all that other stuff. Whereas this, it looks like, a, you know, I can change what's in the middle, but I'm not so sure I can change the whole display. What I love about having big, you know, mud terrain tires is that I don't have to worry about anything on the shoulder. I mean, I can pull over anywhere and know that I'm not gonna bust a tire. I can hit potholes. I can get nice and close to that shoulder. Whereas like that little rogue, maybe he'll bust a tire on a pothole if he had to move over. Not here. These dampers don't disappear the road. They're not like a Ford Raptor in that sense. You still feel things. You still notice that things exist, but it's controlled. And because you've got the three valve system, it's gonna help you at you know reasonable speeds, off-road stuff, and if you happen to get airborne, it's gonna catch you. This rear end does a pretty good job putting down that power. We're in normal mode, so it's just sending power to the rears. We're not in all-wheel drive. It would be lovely if people could stay in their lanes. Um, I try to do my best to do that in a big truck like this because I certainly, in my Porsche, would not want to be uh, hit head-on by something of this size. So, you know, keep it between the mustard and the mayo, guys. Get off those phones. Suspension, though, really comfortable, really dialed in, but also not air ride it's not an s-class it, it, it still gives you the sensation that you're in a truck but man oh man do i forget that i'm in a truck because of these seats they are so darn comfortable i can engage the massage seat if i can find the darn button actually that button there it is okay button can be hard to find with your fingers sometimes but now i'm getting a massage from the top of my back all the way down to my you know basically the lower back at4 right there another off-road sierra love to see it And the visibility out of this truck is is really lovely. This is a great place to be. I feel so confident in where I'm placing it and I wouldn't mind towing with it because I feel like I'd have a good handle on what's going on with my trailer. I do have a nitpicky strange complaint about this vehicle. It's the blinker stock. So check this out, engaged. The amount of force it takes to turn it off. Now I know you're probably gonna self-cancel it anyway, but still. But it means that sometimes when I'm pushing it back, sometimes I go and engage it the other direction. And it just, it, it, it reminds me of my 911, my 80s 911, listen to this. It's just a little cumbersome. And in a $90,000 truck, I just, I just want those little interactions to be taken care of. So I'm sure you can go out and find tons of videos on these things doing incredible things off-road. But it's important that you know what it's like to drive on road because that's probably where you're gonna spend 90, at least 90% of your driving in one of these. And maybe you are gonna like fill it to the brim and tow things constantly. Uh, but if you're just like purely off-roading, this likely isn't the vehicle that you're choosing. You're probably choosing something a little more hardcore versus like this nice plush, lovely interior. This is a wonderful on-road truck that also gives you the option to get some serious off-roading done when you choose. For the first time in my life, I know what it's like to be an incredibly beautiful woman in the world because men look at me in this truck and gawk. The way men stare at this truck, look at that. The slack-jawed beauty, he's still looking, he's still looking. The way men look at this truck is like they just can't help themselves. They're just staring, they're rubbernecking. And it is like a little weird at first because you just can't believe that everybody is staring at the thing. 
And you, you might feel a little self-conscious, but then you're like, yep, that's just my truck. I bet you do like it. It is such a looker. I think this color really does it for it too. And the wheels with the tires, all the things, this thing just looks so darn cool. Way over for this boat. Now, if you're hearing a whole bunch of road noise, it's not totally fair because they've chewed up this road. They're repaving everything on 495. So I'm gonna put on our cruise control. It does have uh, adaptive cruise control, so that way it's going to just measure who's in front of me, not anything phenomenally new in the world, but nice to have. You can change your distance right here if you so choose, your gap adjust, and it does a pretty darn good job. Now I wish, I wish, that this had Super Cruise. I'm sure it's an option, it has to be, right? But for 90 grand, to not have Super Cruise is pretty bothersome to me. I would assume that's just another, you know, couple thousand dollar add-on or something. I haven't looked through the configurator, but that, that kind of irks me. For this kind of money, you gotta give us Super Cruise. She'll hustle. So make no mistake, maybe not a TRX in terms of power, but it ain't slow. Fuel economy, not great. I've done 233 miles in this at an average of 15.3 miles per gallon. That's mostly highway as well. Now on this trip where I've just started driving, I've done 17 miles, 14.4 miles per gallon because I've been getting into it a little bit to show off the character of this beautiful engine, but it's not amazing. And maybe in the truck world, it's okay. I'm just saying as a daily driver, do you need to be consuming this much fuel just to get around? And if the answer is no, then maybe you wanna go a little smaller. Maybe you wanna get yourself a midsize truck because the Canyon in Colorado are are big enough now and they are beautiful trucks. They're great to drive. I think the Canyon Denali is still my pick of the litter here because I think it fits my lifestyle. It fits the size and scope of what I want to do with the truck. And it's actually probably more off-roady for New England in my case because if I want to go an off-road in New England, they're narrow trails. This is a wide truck. Now maybe it's not as wide as a Raptor or a TRX, but it's still wide in terms of the trails that I've got. And if I don't wanna pinstripe the whole side of the car with branches, the Canyon in Colorado might be a better fit. So I think that's gonna do it for the AT4X AEV edition. I, I'm really impressed with this. I love the Sierra. I love driving these things. It's certainly expensive at $90,000, and those are decisions that you are going to have to make because I certainly am not gonna tell you how to spend your money. So thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Thanks to GMC for sending this out uh, to live with for a little bit. I always appreciate that. Send more, give me more cars. I wanna go do some playful things. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one. Train tires are certainly not sporty. But they get the job done. Like, I can still get into this a little bit without fear of, like, terrifying understeer. I mean, that's actually faster than I anticipated it would hook. And here we are. Okay, I don't like that. That's not connected. Shouldn't that be locked? Shouldn't that be locked out? Hmm. Hmm.